and he has his cousin Vinny moment. And again, listener, I can only express to you my condolences and sadness that you cannot watch Andrew's notes <laughs> devolve into confusion <laughs> and then fear and then acceptance throughout this quote unquote deposition. <laughs> oh yeah, no, the, this is uh, the, this someday photographs of my notes will be used in the Kubler Ross <laughs> scale. Right? Like in, oh Christ! God awful movie movie movie. Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting 500 miles to my right in disgusting, rat-infested Baltimore, Maryland, is my good friend, (laughs) Andrew Torres. It's a mess. Andrew, welcome back. Thanks, Heath. Uh, I was going to go for my typical witty banter here, but now I think I'm going to go for the jugular. uh, (laughs) Now that you've called shots fired on Baltimore here. (laughs) And sitting just outside of the social media internet, just barely, is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how's it going? Ooh, I, I'd prefer if we were married before you asked me that question. I just opened it. <laughs> we are touching voices, whether you like it or not. So <laughs> tell us, Andrew, we watched a movie that I'm sure you loved. What are we going to be breaking down today? We, we watched, and I swear I am not making this up, Come What May. It's the story of how to debate abortion as told by homeschooled 12-year-olds who think that the two yep. positions are pro-life from the moment of conception because it's a baby. Correct. And maybe, just maybe, one person somewhere can get an abortion if she was raped by Brett Kavanaugh and also Brett Kavanaugh is her dad. Oh, God. <laughs> it really is almost exact. Like, that wasn't exaggerating. Nope. That's pretty. That's the yeah, movie. I don't do comedy. That's just it's it was straight. Pretty tight. It was made by homeschooled twelve-year-olds. We'll get into the exact <laughs> details of that. They'll admit it in the movie. <laughs> yep. Uh, and Eli, um, you got a few hints already. How bad was this movie? Well, if you hate Andrew Torres and you want to <laughs> torture him for ninety straight minutes, you will love this movie, listener. Seriously, this movie takes literally everything my friend Andrew Torres loves and he holds dear and destroys it. Law, baseball, debate, yep. homeschooling, <laughs> fucking baking. There is nothing. Oh. If, if at the end of this movie, Andrew's wife walked onto screen and got hit by a train, it would be complete. It would destroy all things Andrew Torres likes. And his notes... Devolve. If you love Edgar Allan Poe, you'll love Andrew Torres's notes. By the end of this movie, they're just like, you motherfucker. He's sending out phone numbers that he's doxed to these kids. I'm coming to your house. That's true. <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. I'm guessing you guys will have an answer to this question for that reason. Is there anything you'd like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, well, Eli took my first seven choices yeah, here, so I, I, I guess I'll have to go with best worst cheese grating. Um, I mean, there were there were eight scenes of bloody knuckles that they had to cut out of this movie. No question. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to go with best worst baseball. Um, oh. Now, I don't oh. just mean like the sport. Of base doing baseball, I do mean that, but specifically, you I do mean, mean like that, though. a baseball. There's the guy who plays the main character very clearly insisted on carrying around a baseball at every moment because when he doesn't, even in real life or acting, the slender man shows up and gets angry and <laughs> children start weeping. But this actor is zero percent capable of doing one single baseball thing despite his weird obsession with carrying a baseball so to make it seem slightly less crazy to have that ball the whole time the movie had the dad character do a baseball thing next to this main guy for one little (laughs) scene but dad can't do a baseball thing either so it's just a fucking disaster they're like 
Ever, so many injuries. I guarantee that baseball <laughs> and that scene caused so many injuries on this set every day. That, look, the ball itself. Look, this is clearly the the lead actor's binky, right? Like he's got to have it on him at all times. One hundred percent. And it looks like the ball ripped out of the dog's mouth in the sandlot, right? Like I mean, oh, it, it is, the ball yes. itself is disgusting. Yeah. Oh, gross. Hey, we will get to the batting cage scene, but let's just say the miracle of editing does some miracles. And when in Eli this movie. says batting cage, you're picturing some particular activity. It won't be that. We'll tell you nope. when we get there. Nope. Yeah. I didn't say pitching machine. I said batting cage. Damn yeah, it. Sort of those words might apply. Anyway, that was the facility that they were at when they filmed the scene. We, we can tell you that much. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll tell you all about the psychological training video used to test Andrew's rage control as a debate team coach. That is <laughs> called whatever the fuck. Come what may. Come what may. Sorry, formula. Come what may. Next up, we got a new segment brought to you by Liquid Death Mountain Water. Sourced and bottled in the Alps, Liquid Death's infinitely recyclable cans of stone cold mountain water will instantly murder your thirst. And now... The Liquid Death Thirst Obituaries. All right. The first one here is Carly Cantor's thirst from Los Angeles, California. Carly's thirst was found chopped in half vertically on the front lawn of a friend's house party. Rest in pieces, Carly's thirst. Why axis? Patrick Cook's thirst from Ladenburg, Pennsylvania, was recently found in a shallow grave at a local campsite. Pat's friends and family were elated about the death of Pat's thirst because they say his thirst, quote, made him act like an asshole. Asshole. And finally, Zach Greenberg's thirst was found decapitated on the floor of a local Denver heavy metal bar known as the Brutal Poodle. Mr. Greenberg stated that the memorial service will consist of him dancing alone on his thirst grave. Brutal poodle. <laughs> well, that concludes this segment of the Liquid Death Thirst Obituaries. If you'd like to brutally murder your own thirst and maybe even get featured on the next segment, head over to liquiddeath.com slash awful. They're offering listeners an exclusive 6.66% discount on 12 packs. That's liquiddeath.com slash awful. Liquid Death Mountain Water. Murder your thirst. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Andrew Torres, and due to a prank war by one of my clients, I will be the moot court coach this semester at Boy Howdy Do We Love Jesus University. So before we start, I want to answer a couple questions. Boo. Yeah. First, I am aware that although my last name is Torres, Boo. I am nevertheless a U.S. citizen. So please stop asking me that. Send him back. Prove it, hippie. Prove it. Secondly, many of you have requested that we segregate the class by gender and, and race again so uh no that's a that's a hard no and uh and please stop asking but he's an octoroon i am not doesn't matter uh, it, finally none of this year's arguments can be based on jesus prayers the bible or stuff you heard in your head that you think is a what? message from an angel how are we even gonna argue that's my whole thing ooh ooh yeah question uh, you in the back in the yeah Go ahead. Hi. I, I noticed you looked at me while you talked just now. Are we married? I, I'm going to kill him. What? Uh, <clears throat> sorry. No. No, we're not married. I'd prefer that we were married. <sighs> well, we're not. And we're back. And we're going to start off with... Uh... <laughs> my 19th free trial from Pure Flix. <laughs> freezing immediately. And... Like, literally freezing within seconds and trying to advertise its other amazing movies to me. Um, I'd seen all of them. It was very depressing, actually. <laughs> and then the movie actually started with a logo and some 
wildly inappropriate music. <laughs> hey, uh, what music should we choose for the intro to our abortion legal movie? Super happy Christmas. Super happy Christmas yes. music. Yes. Super okay. happy Christmas music. Yep. Good. Super ha happy. Oh, uh, uh, Brian, can you edit that out? <laughs> or edit it right in time. Yeah. Have it It'll even in there. Yeah. All good. Yeah. <laughs> My only music note here was SpaghettiOs Western. It felt like. <laughs> I thought I was expecting to like pan out onto a horse, like galloping through the Great Plains with a fetus on top going, yeah, like, I don't know. It's an abortion movie is all I know at this point. Yeah. Wildly inappropriate music. And right out of the gate, these credits are going to inform us. Don't worry. The married couple in this movie are married oh, in real life. Ugh, yeah. Karen Jezik and Kenny Jezik were like two of the first People build, and I was just like, oh, God, this is going to be awful. And then I checked to IMDb, and it's like, yep, they're going to be playing the married couple that they really are. I'm sure they're going to be amazing. See, nope. see yeah, my eyes kind of glazed over during the credits, so it wasn't until the second watch through and the, and the <laughs> first set of notes that I realized they were married in real life. And that, A, explains so much about this movie. It does. And B, <laughs> yes. is a pretty damn good argument for Heath's lifestyle, I just have to say. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> That I'm is fair above enough. the bar of this. Thank you. I'm crushing it. <laughs> and then we credit one very special individual. Andrew, you want to tell us a little about this? Oh, yeah. Dr. Oh, Michael Ferris. Uh, he's, <laughs> is he's, he a doctor? He's a fucking monster. Uh, do we have time for a quick deep dive? You know, 87 You're or so minutes right. on the Absolutely, <laughs> we do. Yeah. Nothing but time, Andrew Torres. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, look, I, I live in Maryland, so I have been aware of this asshole who lives in Virginia for I we pretty much my entire adult life, right? Because he organized the uh, the Christian Homeschool Legal Defense Association, um, which is exactly what you think it is. Yep. <laughs> and he founded Patrick Henry College, which is an unaccredited garbage school for which this movie will be not just product placement, but product placement on a level that made me want to go back and see Transformers 5 again. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. This, is the, this is the safety school for Liberty University. That's yeah, not that, No, that's exactly yeah. right. That's exactly what it is. It has like 12 students and they learned that the earth was created in six days. Spoiler, I'm not saying that like to credit like that's a line from this fucking movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in yep. the brochure. <laughs> and and we should point out this entire movie, this is really important, is based on a lie of omission that this university uses to promote itself as like good at an activity no one cares about. We're gonna get to it, but before we set off on this journey, as you're putting on your adventurer's pack and strapping your belt across your waist, putting your sword in the haber, just keep in mind that all of this is gonna be like, okay, I said I went to Harford University. Yeah. You should listen carefully. <laughs> yeah, it's not great. And we see a little pan across their campus here at the beginning. And like there's it's, it's college kids, but they're dressed like Orthodox rabbis and their wives walking around <laughs> the college campus. It's fucking creep. It's like Handmaid's University. It's not good. Yeah. And so in this first scene, uh, our main character, whose name I never bothered to learn and you shouldn't either, is talking to dad and dad is about to submit his giant rubber band bound textbook to publisher. Yes. <laughs> Yep. And uh, and he claims he's like, you know, he's a biology professor, I guess, at like a, a real college. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're to In believe? this movie he is, yeah. In this movie, right. <laughs> and he's complaining. He's like, yeah, but I won't get tenure, you know, as a biology professor if I publish this book of lies. Yeah, a giant book and of nonsense? No, yeah, how crazy is that? Yeah, <laughs> Right. No, you absolutely wouldn't. That's good. But his son, who's also Christian, is like, I want to transfer to a Christian college. I want to go to Patrick Henry. Maybe you should go there, too. If you publish that book, they'd probably be cool with that, actually. They don't realize that that would make sense in their plot, but it would. <laughs> right. yeah. And then they both have a moment where they're like, what about mom? To which, yeah. again, this is the actual line exchange. What about mom? Yep. <laughs> what about your atheist Jew mom? Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty much. <laughs> yeah, mom hates God and hates freedom. She's not going to go for this. That's what they're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I thought after the yep, there was a little womp womp in the background, but uh, <laughs> they got close. 
And speaking yeah. of mom, now we're going to cut over to mom, whose name is Judith. She will be the only character whose name they ever fucking say. So get <laughs> ready. And she's a high powered lawyer, not in a public library, missing her walk and talk cue. She's a high powered <laughs> lawyer. Oh. Damn it. It's so good. <laughs> the beginning of the scene, she's supposed to just like, you know, walk into the camera frame and like, so close before she walks back out of the camera frame, the guy who's supposed to have the opening line is like, I have the opening line. I'm here. I'm here. I made it. <laughs> she, she had to like shuffle. It's so good. Right. And we learned that she did an amazing job lawyering today. Such an amazing job that her case is going to go to the Supreme Court, which this movie is pretty sure means Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> when, <laughs> when you do an amazing job of lawyering, like your case doesn't get appealed yep. right? like, like that's right. the bad thing when your case gets appealed up to the supreme court but you know the toddlers that made this film didn't know that they just picked words out of a hat so now we cut back to home and mom and dad just don't seem to get along they're uh quizzing their son on some of that moral relativism you've been warned so much about this scene is is bonkers right like they've got a chalkboard like in in place of the window on a door in their kitchen and their son who's like 20 years old right has to write latin words on the chalkboard while they debate this over the <laughs> dinner table. i mean like i homeschool my kid and i teach him debate and everything but like this is weird even for me right like this is crazy <laughs> yeah. and so basically the point here is that mom is arguing for nuance right and 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 dad's response is to huffily write a Latin phrase with bad grammar in my handwriting over a 27 minute period because he's never written in Latin before. Yeah. And then huff out of the room. Am I, am I, am I getting that scene right? Is that uh, what happens? Yeah. He, he also kind of spells it wrong and he also <laughs> completely mistranslates it back to English eventually too. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and all of that is done to distract you from the fact that the, the film writers have accidentally put into mom's mouth in minute three, the only refutation of the only argument you will need for this entire movie. Right. Because, yep. oh, yeah the, yeah, the speed limit thing. Yeah, because the movie is like, well, is it a baby today? Well, then was it a baby yesterday? Well, how about the day before that? Where are you going to draw the line? And mom is like g giving literally a textbook example that you, that you give in, in law school of like, OK, so, you know, when is it reckless? Dri it's at 70. All right. Is, is it reckless driving at 64? All right. Is it reckless driving at 52? Right. Like and and the point of that is that sometimes in the law, like. There's no real difference between going 69 and going 70, but like sometimes you just have to draw a line because otherwise society would fall apart, right? Like you couldn't make any judgments at all. So she makes that a a example that that causes dad to mutter under his breath. I'm getting a <laughs> divorce and I hate you uh, and storm out of the room and write fiat justitia et periat mundus on the little <laughs> chalkboard, which it's he it he thinks it says do the right thing, come what may. That's what the movie <laughs> thinks is the translation. Of no, that. it's not. <laughs> no, nope. the translation is let justice be done, though the world perish. <laughs> and <laughs> this is very this different is vibe. By, it's slightly different, at least slightly different vibe. And this is used by Immanuel Kant, among others, but famously by Kant, approximately the same phrase, talking about how utilitarian ethics is always wrong. <laughs> so... There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So the kid eventually translates it. That's how we learn the movie doesn't understand what this thing actually says. The kid writes, do the right thing, come what may to like reinforce that he's also Christian like dad. What if the wrong thing comes? Go fuck yourself. Like, you, <laughs> I don't know. You, you can't just call time out on time for your your philosophy. Like we're all in the time dimension. I don't Incorrect. No, no, no. Incorrect. They, Apparently they, will, I'm call, wrong. they yeah. will call a timeout on time in so many ways in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of which, even though this movie will not take place over a full calendar year, now it's time for the National Moot Court Championship. Not really. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, and by the way, Patrick Henry College is... The best in the world at moot court championships. Yeah. According to this movie. Andrew, does that sound correct? <laughs> okay. So 
The National Moot Court Competition is one of the most prestigious law school contests, right? It is co-sponsored by the American Trial Lawyers Association. It features teams from 124 different law schools, including the, the most cool. prestigious, right? Um, uh, question, does Patrick Henry College have a law school? No, and Patrick Henry College won the National American Moot Court Competition, which does not have its own Wikipedia page, so I can't figure out what the fuck it is. Um, later on, we see a montage from it, and as best I can tell, it is limited to like nine different teams total, right? Like, so they are trying to pretend like they've won an actual, and again, like the actual moot court thing is a thing no one gives a shit about, right? Like right. the big national moot court competition, right? Like, you know, it's been won by like students from, perfectly fine law schools but like you know like I, it, nobody thinks that because your law school won the moot court competition that they're now worth anything so that's right put that all together this movie <laughs> is promoting the fact that a tiny christian school you've never fucking heard of and no one in their right mind would attend based on the strength of its success in a competition no one enters that kind of sounds like a much more important competition that still no one cares about. <laughs> right. And we should point out that Henry Patrick University or whatever, the Steve Dave University <laughs> is not allowed to enter the National Moot Court competition right. because they're not an accredited university. So when you go to the National Moot Court, because I was like, that's got to be bullshit. So I look up Moot Court National Championship. And the National Moot Court Cart competition comes up and it's like, oh, my gosh, the top of it is Harvard and then there's Yale and then there's all these fancy schools. And I was like, ah, I guess that's a real thing. So then I entered Patrick Henry College Moot Court and it's literally like a, a Wix.com website with the Earlum Plepsum like Latin <laughs> fill in your copy here. Right. McAfee still in popped up. You need to navigate back away. <laughs> yeah, that. Absolutely no. not. It is. It takes some solid. This is like if the American College of Pediatricians, that fake, like homophobic, transphobic group that tries to sound like the real group of pediatricians yeah, made exactly. a movie about winning an award from their like fake college of homophobic pediatricians. Yeah. <sighs> We're hoping you don't Google us the movie. <laughs> if their 12 year old shitty kids that don't go to school made a movie. That's yeah, yeah that's right, what we're watching. Right, right. I also just need to point out Patrick Henry College has 304 students. <laughs> I just need I just needed the no, world to know. No, that. no, no, that's that's, that's absolutely <laughs> worth pointing out. I I just need to point out that we are not so so we get that first sleight of hand, right, of pretending that their fake moot court thing is the real moot court thing, but like moot court itself kind of sucks, right? Like it's really just sort of it's more like theater than it is really like an actual academic activity. And and the movie knows this. So we're like 3 seconds after that they start calling it debate. And that was the first time where my blood pressure <laughs> spiked to like 300 over 200 because this is not debate, right? I would, I would pay literally any amount of money if anyone associated with this entire fucking movie would watch just one of Alex's debate rounds because it would blow their minds. <laughs> you see, and you see these kids get up like usually in movies, right? Like you have the 90210 problem, right? You got like 30 year olds pretending like they're 17. Here, what we have are, I, I think like an actual like, six set of 16 year olds like on their high school mock trial team that are pretending to be in college like because they're delivering these like it's not just that they're bad actors like the content of what they're saying is unimaginably stupid like if you yeah. if you tried to oh. say this in an actual moot court they yeah. would be like okay let's <laughs> everyone clap for the nice team from patrick henry now just you doing mask work just fucking relax <laughs> uh, come on uh, yeah. have it if you had any doubts about us doubting their moot court prowess, all you need to do is listen to the six seconds of arguments this gives us <laughs> about a traffic ticket, and you'll know that this is not all there. Okay, so oh. moot court, I just want to point this out, is supposed to be arguing in front of a federal court, right? And they're arguing a... A traffic ticket? Andrew, is that how it works? <laughs> it's, it's even worse than that because it's a, that you do it, and, and this is the, the way the actual moot court competition works. You, you have a three judge panel. So it's meant to simulate 
an appellate court, right? Like the like the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit or something like that. And and they definitely don't hear traffic. You know, they don't get up and are like, <laughs> oh, you know, he went through the intersection. Well, like, I, right? Yeah. And and we're meeting the main female protagonist here, right? What's her name? I don't even know. I don't know. The movie will never goddamn use it. No, it does at the end when she's being sold by her father. It is Rachel. Oh, Rachel. Rachel. Right, right. Okay, so yeah, we're meeting Rachel here. She goes to Patrick Henry, and we're about to find out that she is the reigning national universal world champ of bullshit fake Fake mood court. Mood right. court, yeah. yeah. But remember, she starts off, like any good movie, it gives us stakes, right? She starts off as the very best in this activity. Put a pin in that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. By, and she proves that by being like, uh, there's a dash cam video of this guy driving 105 miles an hour on a residential street. And apparently there's another side to this case. Like somebody else was arguing like, yeah, but... Do where do we draw the bright line on the hundred miles? No, I, I don't understand what the other argument would have been. But she's presenting that, and the judge is like, "Oh, we're playing with data now, huh? Okay, great. Let's just use data." And that see, I I don't know. The, the movie got very confused because Rachel's a good guy, but she was arguing for data. They they don't know what's happening. Yeah, it was very upsetting. So so now we cut over to uh, main character and his parents interviewing to see if they want to go to Patrick Henry. And um, one of the sneeches from a Dr. Seuss book <laughs> appears to be the head of this school. <laughs> he, he opens up by saying, we believe in reason because we believe in God. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> and then he says, we don't limit our facts to natural reality. We're all about supernatural facts, yeah. too. Yeah. We're all about alternative facts <laughs> as well. He, he, the, the literal <laughs> quote is this. We want to know all the facts and all the supernatural facts. And I just wrote in my notes. So the not facts as well as the right, facts. Right, That's good. Right. Nope. Uh, and this is where mom issues her challenge. She will pay for his first year of Patrick Davis Jr., whatever the fuck it's called, <laughs> high school for Neil grown-ups. Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick <laughs> Harris College. Yep. But he has to win the American Moot Court Christian Championship. Otherwise, they will not pay for his second year of college. <laughs> and those are the fucking stakes of this movie. Yep. And we get a fun physical bit there. Mom, like, writes out the two checks for, like, year one. And she's like, all right, I'm giving you year one. And then she writes out the check for year two. And she starts to hand it to him. She's like, I'll pay for the second year of tuition. Try to grab the check now. Please grab the check now. Uh, Try to grab it. Uh, Try to grab it. Uh, if, and she pulls it back. <laughs> if you win the Moot Court Championship. It's so dumb. They they miss the timing on their It feels like one of the one of the actors is always like still buffering in a bunch of different <laughs> moments in this movie. And then I mean, they catch up to each other. I mean, judging by the protagonist's uh, physical skills at sports that we will see later on, like that may have been the best take out of like 118. Right? Very likely. Yeah. I mean, his hand-eye coordination is is not great. No. <laughs> so, uh, and can I, can we talk about one other detail of this scene? It's very small, but the, uh, remember that chalkboard they got in their kitchen <laughs> for, for, normally for passive aggressive Latin fights sure. between, you know, evil Jewish atheist mom and Christian dad. This time it's erased and there's a shopping list for what they need at the supermarket. They need flour, cereal, carrots, apples, oatmeal, and sugar because they are horses. <laughs> Absolutely. Fucking 1800s. Fucking I don't know. horses. Phosphate soda. Like, what? it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now it's time to head over to Patrick Henry College, and we get a little uh, montage of the campus here. Hey, you want to tell us about the first shot of this montage? Mother fuck. Okay. <laughs> volleyball. They start with a volleyball scene, and is this? Is, it is so rough. This is the worst moment of volleyball I could possibly <laughs> imagine, and they kept it, which, again, just like Andrew said before, this was the best volleyball shot they got. Yes. So, like... That's and it's one of those moments where like somebody who's uncoordinated is trying to 
you know, hit a physical object with their hands <laughs> slash arms, but <laughs> they don't have any of the timing to make that physically possible. So that it's this person like winding up. Okay. You know, you know, in baseball, when somebody like wildly swings and misses too early at a changeup because they're like five minutes ahead of the pitch and they like drill themselves into the ground. It's like that for a volleyball swing at a volleyball. And the person just like bends down and torques their whole body. Big swing does not make contact, clearly hurts themselves, <laughs> non-contact injury. It's amazing. I, I wanted the whole montage to be like this, like the girl missing the volleyball, a guy getting crushed by a shelf in the library, another guy's just like on the toilet. Oh, I got food poisoning from the cafeteria. Patrick Henry College. We're legally allowed to use the word college. So, so it's the first day of moot court. And who is there? Moot court coach, but Michael Ferris, sorry, Dr. Doctor. Michael Ferris Thank himself. You. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we get, we, we get our first in-depth interview with Dr. Michael Ferris, who delivers his lines with the, uh, wooden conviction that led him to a 10 point loss when he ran for lieutenant governor of Virginia a decade ago. <laughs> and by the way, in a red wave year, right? Like, uh, yeah. Uh, God. Should have used some blackface, man. Yep. Would have done better. Yeah. All right. have the it. bar is not high to be elected lieutenant governor <laughs> in Virginia. But oh, he just didn't wow. have the stuff. Yeah. And so we learned that this year's subject is going to be Roe versus Wade. So I'm not going to lie. I went down a little American College of Moot Court or whatever this fucking fake competition is uh, thing. And what I realized from looking at like the records and the stuff on their Wix website is Every single year, the American totally not fake competition of moot court has one of the court cases that <laughs> Christians have famously lost. And then they parade their 11 homeschool kids in front of it. And then adults, most of whom aren't even lawyers, let alone judges, go like, well, I sure have changed my mind on the 14th <laughs> Amendment. So. Again, it's not like this is a new thing. They do like Roe versus Wade is their fucking free bird. But yeah, this year, the challenge for moot court is going to be to redecide Roe versus Wade. So so in your actual research, did, did you find out? Because like, the, the thing that drove me, I, I was going to say the most level of crazy, but it's all an infinite way tie for, for the most level of crazy. The movie seems to think that when you do moot court or debate or whatever, you get to like pick the side you believe in and only do that, which of course misunderstands the whole fucking point of the activity, right? Like you have to debate both sides, but like these assholes are ne no, they're just like, Oh, nope. Obviously con, um, like who, sh who shows up for pro, right? Okay, like some. Let's practice flipping coins. You can, we can get heads every time, right? We'll just practice that a lot. So uh, it appears that everyone just shows up and argues against Roe versus Wade in this competition. Oh, God. Yeah. Yep. Well, That's why it's a moot court, because there's no other side. Because <laughs> the point is moot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, uh. And uh, just a little shout out. So, yeah, they're about to talk about it. So main character is not sure if you can overturn Roe versus Wade in this literal quote liberal wasteland and oh we can do it blah 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 back and forth it doesn't really have any stakes or matter but there is one character who's very spiritually sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> look i am a fat man who used to be a fat boy whose very sweet mother thought that bright patterns and stripes were a good <laughs> idea hi I, liz i almost certainly own this shirt like because <laughs> this kid, he's like third from the back. He's just an extra. He went to a tailor and he was like, one word, my dude, Funkadelic. And then he walked out, <laughs> came back a week later, saw what they made, lit it on fire and was like, hey, 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 maybe you didn't hear me when I said motherfucking Funkadelic. He's wearing a 1980s Coke binge, the shirt. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Just stripes of crazy, crazy bright. Color. Like I wanted somebody to start playing a shirt like Simon. Like that's just like boop, <laughs> bop, beep, bop, red, green, pink, pink. Like it's so busy. It's so loud. It's amazing. Yeah. But they never address it. I, but well, I think this is I think this is intentional because a, a, as you have alluded to, this movie never gives anybody a name. Right. Like because we're 
unlike blastocysts, we're not supposed to think of them as people, right? Like they're just cardboard cutouts out to deliver their lines that, you know, are meant to set up the sides of the abortion debate. So, I, I mean, I think you're just if you if people didn't have the crazy colored shirt, you'd be like, who's that again? He's oh, yeah, well, you know, no one has a name. Yep. Fair. And, and by the way, when you say set up the sides of the abortion debate, that's we're going to get the stakes of the movie here yep. for the first time. <laughs> mm hmm. The sides of the abortion debate are no and no minus point zero 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 bar one, <laughs> I, th I think is basically what they're going for. Mm -hmm. And main character Caleb wants to like win the moot court thing so he can go to college again next year. So he wants to take the like easy route, which is, you know, don't overturn Roe v. Wade, but this one exception where you shouldn't be allowed to have an abortion and the example is uh it's parental notification right that's like yeah the crux of this one so like he's saying yeah well you know parents of a 15 year old should have to be told when that's about to happen and uh main character rachel who is you know heart of gold wants to go all the way and just overturn roe v wade so that is the entire <laughs> stakes of this movie that's here. what we're going with and and, and this breaks down, right? It's, so it's Michael Ferris and the entire, and Rachel and the entire team are all on the like, oh, uh, the, the topic is abortion. Obviously we should go in and scream that Roe v. Wade should be overturned. All of those people against our protest, Caleb, you said his name is Caleb, whatever the hell. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, uh, I think it's Caleb. He's the only one on the other side going, maybe, maybe we should acknowledge that the precedent exists, but just got the hell out of it. So basically like this mirrors the debate that Neil Gorsuch and, 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 uh, uh, the chief justice Roberts are having literally right at this moment. God damn it. <laughs> this movie was yeah. made in 2009 as like a fantasy for yeah. these idiots. And now it's a goddamn reality. And now it's yep. happening in the Supreme court chambers. Yeah. yeah. Literally right now. The only thing you need to remember from this scene is that they're going to try to overturn Roe versus Wade and that Caleb and Rachel are partners. Ooh. So now we cut over to mom's super fancy law firm, not a library. You're the one who's a liar. Um, <laughs> where Caleb is an intern. Um, and like all interns, he's been given a case to solve. He's been given a cardboard box to carry, which is a, that's the same as a lawyer casing law, right? Andrew, I, cardboard box. Like, Giving the intern a cardboard box is probably a step more responsibility than legal interns actually get. But no, <laughs> we'll find out that he's like drafting interrogatories, interviewing witnesses. Like it's it, everything about this would be professional malpractice if this film weren't written by, you know, 10 year olds who, when you ask them what they want to do when they grow up, are like, well, either a lawyer or a spaceman. I, uh. I want to be Jefferson Beauregard Sessions the third. <laughs> yeah. You got it, kid. You're in. Oh. Also, weird. I don't know if it was intended as a snub or something, but obviously I paused the screen to look at the diplomas on the back wall to see where, you know, evil atheist <laughs> mom went to law school. <laughs> Turns out Gonzaga. So I don't know why. I don't know why oh, they hate a, uh, Mark Few hot, so much. But yeah. Hot burn and Gonzaga. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, yeah, he's doing... The like, I'm going to do this case for you, mom. Don't worry about it. By the way, uh, she's reading a book. Just a little note. She's reading the international law on the rights of the child. Yeah, right. Actually, actual UN treaty. I mean, not <laughs> likely to be on your desk in a law firm, but you know, who knows? Chicken soup for the abortionist soul. Yeah. Yeah. And she's reading some books. She also, they also have, um, in a second, we're, we're going to see Caleb and Rachel doing their like studying for the moot court and a book that they have is the Cato handbook for Congress. That's the Cato Institute, the libertarian think tank. So yep. they're, they're going to make a strong libertarian anti-choice argument together. <laughs> Clever. Yeah. The baby's not being detained. Yeah. So they're, they're working <laughs> on their thing. Um, and what we learn in this scene is that mom is actually representing abortionists in the abortion court of abortion area. So she's not telling dad. Look, the stakes are supposed to be that mom's 
taken a case without getting her husband's goddamn permission. And so she's sneaking around like Lucy and Ethel in the chocolate fucking factory. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, and by the way, she's the bad guy in all of she this. She is the right? bad guy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For, for doing her job competently. Yeah. So now it's time for an office party. And let's just say there are nearly 12 people at this <laughs> high-end law firm's quote-unquote party. In fairness, I have been to law firm parties that are sadder than this. So. <laughs> you know what, Andrew? Really? I'm going to push back on that. No, you haven't. No, you haven't. <laughs> have you ever arrived on a porch where the party's happening and the entire party of eight people have evenly spread out on the opposite <laughs> side of the porch to face you. Yeah, they're there. I they, the parties tend not to be like, no, hey, wait, uh, you can't say anything here or else you're going to have to join SAG and it's a whole. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. But because mom is at this fancy law firm party, she misses date night with her husband. He <laughs> cooked and everything. <laughs> Dad, uh, Dad's serving the empty plates at home. It's just he's the just best. Got empty plates. He's he sets them out so that he can cry, and then he has this like huge coffee mug. And if that is not a mug full of scotch, I will eat my hat. Like, oh. <laughs> well, according to their shopping list, he made him carrots, apples, and oatmeal, and that's uh, a mug full of sugar or whatever else is on that list. Uh, yeah, that's deep, all they have. Deep. Deep fried carrots in mush. Like, that's a perfectly valid dinner. I mean, that that sounds pretty Apple good. garnish. Yeah. But yeah, he's mad because that stuff's it's all cold. And he's <laughs> she's out all night murdering babies and sucking dicks on the porch of <laughs> law parties. Yeah. Yeah. So she comes home and he's huffy. And then they all they have this really weird scene. So here's what they're trying to establish. Rachel's going to come over and meet the parents. Mom doesn't have time for a date night. But because the idea of two scenes, they were like, Jesus, we'd have to pause and then plus record twice. They have those two <laughs> scenes simultaneously. So he's like, can we have a date night on Thursday? And she's like, no, I'm busy. And he's like, Rachel's coming over Thursday. And she goes, I'll be there. And then they all pause because they realize how insane that is. And then the scene fades <laughs> out. What did we all just say? Let's all go over what we said again. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. And, and, and you alighted over the crazier <laughs> sentence, right? Which is she comes back and says uh, she can't tell her husband that she's working on an abortion case for the abortionists. Right. So she's like, I'm working on a Supreme Court case, which which look like that's a moment. If you're a lawyer in which you should come home and like celebrate with your spouse. Right. Like that's a pretty that's huge. Big, right. Yeah, that's yeah. a huge deal. So, so that she's like she delivers. For me, what was the best laugh line of this entire movie? So for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be kind of busy. <laughs> like, do, do these, right? Yeah, all oh, preparing for the Supreme. Oh, yeah, you knocked that one out just in a, oh, my God. That, hey, it could take almost a month to get ready for the Supreme Court. Uh, I, I will uh, not be able to watch Netflix with you tonight. Yeah. You need to save that episode <laughs> till tomorrow. Don't be a dick. <laughs> Going before the Supreme Court. Uh, so now Rachel is doing what? What all first dates do, she's at his house baking Caleb a pie. <laughs> Which means that their date was that he invited her over to bake for him. Right. Yeah, and like four hours early, too. I mean, like <laughs> you'd think baking yeah. is the thing that the Christian movie could get right. Nope. Ugh. No. And mom shows up and she's like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> um, Hello. Girl, I've never met. I guess you were here hours ago making a pie from scratch at my house. Um, that's weird. I'm mom. I haven't been named yet. I'm Judith. Yeah. What's your name? And they meet. Also, did this bother you? The giant head streamer that <laughs> what's her name was wearing this whole time? Rachel has a enormous like she's trying to create drag to slow her head down as it falls from the atmosphere. <laughs> Sorry, my. My head falls out of airplanes sometimes. I just never, you never know when you want to be ready. Um, cool. And, and she also, she does that weird culty thing where she calls the adult sir and ma'am in this scene. Uh, uh, we're going to revisit in about six seconds, but, but I just wanted to point out that's weird. She, so mom says, Oh, okay. Rachel, do you bake often? To which Rachel replies, my mom is dead. <laughs> 
What? A little, yeah. a little light banter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> my mom's dead. She got aborted. So I took over the baking. I don't want to talk about my mom. <laughs> right. So, yeah. so they're all eating dinner and they're doing the small talk. And again, this is where we get the weird sir and ma'am thing. And Judith says, you can just call me Judith. And then dad says, I like it that you call me sir. And there is yeah. a 45 minute pause. <laughs> <Ugh>. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I have seen this porn before. Like, Rachel and Dad are totally going to fuck the second Mom leaves the room. Then Mom's going to come back in like 10 minutes later, right? And then Ted Cruz is going to retweet it. I get it. Yeah. (laughs) Am I going to pay for this apple pie? Yeah, so either way, uh, the the, the fact that her mom is dead and that she calls adults weird BDSM terminology means that Judith offers Rachel an internship at her... Supreme Court arguing law firm. You know how you can just hand out internships at your Supreme Court arguing law firm? She does one of those. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. That's what happens. <laughs> so now dad and mom are fighting again. Everyone leaves uh, and they're fighting again uh, because dad thinks that Judith is only hiring her for her sweet pie making skills. <laughs> <laughs> and and Caleb warns Rachel here. He's like, trust me, you're going to hate the law firm. It makes you a bad wife slash mother. <laughs> <laughs> and then then we get what I think the like infants who made this film think is supposed to be a montage, right? Of yep, an interning montage. <laughs> an interning <laughs> montage. Okay, so first, lesson number one, homeschool kids. It's not a montage unless it's set to Survivor, okay? <laughs> lesson number two, when you're... When in the middle of your montage, an obvious lesbian checks out your main character's ass for like 37 <laughs> seconds and then Thank licks you. her lips. <laughs> uh, may, maybe, yeah, cut that out. Uh, I don't oh, know. They, they oh. missed a few of those. They also missed when they did a shot of the campus earlier. They missed a very clear lesbian couple doing the walk of shame into their dorm, yeah. which I very much enjoyed, too. They do not know what that is. Yeah, so she does her little montage, moving paper, pouring coffee, and again, as Andrew said, having her ass checked out by the (laughs) office lesbian for a full on-screen minute. But then we sort of doodly-do out of that, and the file that Caleb was handed before, she's going to organize for him. Organize? Right. (laughs) Do, Do what alphabetically thematically <laughs> like i you you uh. that's how it works right autobiographically yeah. i don't know if you get if you get it alphabetical you win the case though that's right. the box that's the job right yeah if you do that and you memorize all the code numbers in the right order we'll, we'll get to that later oh <laughs> jesus and this is where he asks her on a date and she says, not until we're married. Literally. Okay. So I, I watched this movie twice because I was like, ah, I wasn't paying attention the first time. The One of the subplots of this movie is that this girl cannot date, ride alone in a vehicle with, or hold the hand of someone she is not going to marry. Now, look, I have a hunch the three of us are unprepared to answer the following question, but... <laughs> If you are not willing to date someone, how do you choose who you marry in this strange subculture? Um, I believe your father chooses who you marry. (laughs) Okay. And the movie will confirm that at the end, if I remember correctly. Yep. It, it, I, I think you are not selling the way in which this line was delivered because I, I actually like perked up here because Caleb says, Hey, you want to go out on a date? And Rachel's response is, well, this is going to sound weird. And like 100% of the time, I mean, that means you're into some kinky shit, yeah, right? Exactly. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. not Rachel. <laughs> no. This is going to sound weird, but uh, I'd like to bring in Mike Pence to answer that question <laughs> for me. <laughs> that he is walks not... out for a fucking PSA. <laughs> that is not and how mother I told that me <laughs> that I can't ride alone with women. So same for oh, you. Yeah. The, more, the whore you know, I'm Mike Pence. I'm vice president. <laughs> so she... Uh, spends 30 seconds telling him about how fun it would be to only try one flavor of ice cream forever, but not actually try it before you commit to just, you know, look at it from afar and then have that ice cream's dad commit you to that. Who the fuck knows? Anyway, she pitches their weird Christian misogyny form. And now we cut to them 
having another conversation because this movie is made by demons from hell who want to torture <laughs> Andrew Torres. <laughs> but the conversation they're having now is that they're pretty sure they can actually overturn Roe versus Wade with their fucking moot court trial. Yep. Also, this we get another shot of the baseball that's constantly being carried around. <laughs> We've had a few already. But the whole time, I couldn't concentrate because I was just like, please try to do one physical thing with that baseball. I know you're going to hit yourself in the eye somehow. It's going to be the best. But no, no, they never really do. He just holds it for several scenes. That's it. Yep. We also get a little banter here. See, she writes all of her legal arguments on a legal pad. That's why it's called the legal pad, silly. And he uses a fancy computer. And the only reason I point this out, one, is this fucking terrifying and insane. But the second is his line delivery when he tells her that she should use a computer is, it is the 21st century. <laughs> <laughs> it's the 20. To, fuck, does it go up or down from the number? No. The 20th. T twenty first. I gotta watch century. that logo at the beginning of the twentieth century Fox movies. There is the twenty first century. There we 21st go. Twenty first century. <laughs> there we cool. Go. Well, and you're dressed for fucking Amish sock hop, Rachel. <laughs> I don't know what's happening there. Oh, oh my God! I have eleven pages of notes about this pink shirt, Mike. Like, like uh, it, it's so it shows back up in like five more scenes because the movie doesn't have secular concepts like a wardrobe budget or continuity editor or script writer or anything like that no. but oh my god this adults is adults who write movies uh, because the last line was caleb looks into her eyes and is like you look awesome in purple and then they cut away and it's like in pink not so much <laughs> <laughs> yeah so again this is the same argument that they had in the last scene except now they have it one-on-one -on -one. he wants to go for the exception to roe versus wade she wants to go to overturn roe versus wade and this is where they come up with their first argument against roe versus wade which is you know how parental rights are fundamental rights oh like a mom's right to not die fuck okay <laughs> no, I life again. Liberty and the pursuit of mommy and me daycare. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in this movie will ever approach an argument, right? Like it, it will occasionally sidle up alongside and wave at an argument while it goes past. But like there is nothing ever said by any of the characters that in that like follows a syllogistic form or reaches a conclusion. It's uh, yeah, no, we are we are free of those things when it comes to this movie. Um, and there's only one other thing I want to touch on in the scene before we move on. <laughs> My favorite line in the film, even better than it's the 21st century, which is when Rachel is trying to convince Caleb to try to overturn Roe versus Wade. She instructs him to go for the jugular. <laughs> wow. Go for the umbilical cord. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a brutal turn. she's like no we really have to try this thing and he's like I think the exception will work and she's like slay our enemies liquid death brought to you by <laughs> liquiddeath.com forward slash awful come on Johnny <laughs> all my notes are just sweep the leg Johnny I will yeah. destroy you I will break you yippee ki -yay, motherfucker <laughs> they're just running through all of the ones that they could get through are you not entertained that's weird okay <laughs> So now it's time to cut over to uh, mom's law firm again. Again, high-powered law firm where her boss is feeding her a cupcake. Andrew, I, is this... Oh, oh, God, <laughs> this was upsetting. The boss of this law firm walks right up to mom and is like, hey, try this dick-shaped pastry covered in cum that I have. I'll hold it. I'll hold it. You just... You just Bring, bring your mouth in and bite. It's so gross. It's a 245-minute scene of <laughs> two adults who are both very conservative Christians stuffing pastries into each other's mouth. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah I mean... Don't don't take legal advice from this podcast or anything, but like if you run a business, maybe don't try and cram frosting into your female employees' mouths. Okay, <laughs> oh, the reason why Unless you have a very specific type of business where that's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not yeah. even that. <laughs> The even more then, you, don't. The more you know. Even then, don't. Yeah, even then, don't. Good point. <laughs> Someone who's got frostingeaters.com like slowly takes out her earbuds. You know, man, I'm a fucking $5 patron. Those assholes are just going to go out there. I was going to be a sponsor. I'm not voting for Bernie Sanders either. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 
The reason that this exists <laughs> is that mom, Judith, wants to induct Rachel into abortionism. Or <laughs> less realistically, she wants Rachel the intern to help her out with her Supreme Court abortion case. Yeah. Like, she needs to know the, like, pro-life playbook, and Rachel is the only one smart enough yeah. to explain <laughs> what those arguments might be yeah. to this lawyer who's about to address the Supreme Court. You know what you can't find in society these days? People willing to articulate the pro-life argument. <laughs> it's, it's difficult. It's hard to find, especially when you're arguing that case at the Supreme Court level. I'm sure you're not hearing from anybody with those opinions. <laughs> right. <laughs> and and the way she reassures, she's she's trying to reassure Rachel that, you know, she's just preparing. She says, well, you wouldn't have to argue the abortion side. And you're like, yeah, you know why? Because you're not a fucking lawyer. You don't you're get to argue anything. You get to go get coffee, okay? Uh, yeah, barely. Yeah. Sometimes you don't get to get coffee. Now Starbucks delivers in a lot of metropolitan cities. Interns are being phased out by the second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Rachel, so Rachel says no, though, yeah. on moral grounds. She's not going to help. And then mom is like, oh, you'd, you'd prefer to choose it's no. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. What other choices do you like? Let's all yeah. name the choices that we enjoy as people, as women. These perhaps. burns are so amazing. And the movie never acknowledges them. She's just like, oh, yeah, no, Rachel, that's your choice. It would be weird for me to take that choice away from you, wouldn't it? Right. Even if I was like really passionate about my beliefs and we disagreed on the physical reality, like my giving you that choice. And you're crying. You're crying. Oh, OK. Ooh, double snot. Double snot right over the front. Lip. All the way. I get it. OK. Yep. Drink it. But just as they're going through that stuff, you full of frosting boss comes in and he says, uh, guys, this scene's been going on too long. We need to move this exact same scene over to. My sad 12 person porch party. <laughs> so they do. <laughs> they star wipe to a fucking porch party. Yeah. <laughs> and at one point at the porch party, it's supposed to be again, they're trying to be like, yeah, this is a real important law firm. That was, again, just to be clear, not a library where our office <laughs> is. So two of the eight people on this porch right now are an ambassador and Washington's number one ranked lobbyist. I'll need you to help me talk to them, Judith. <laughs> I, I, uh, look, I get that the toddlers who finger painted this script like just pick big wordy sounding things to have the lawyers say, but like actual adults delivered that line, right? Like the the <laughs> the ambassador. And when they cut over, right, he's talking about is she going to take up the case involving gun control to the Supreme Court? Like, is he the ambassador from Gunlandia? Like, I, uh, <laughs> oh, motherfucker! I represent a group of sovereign citizens. I like to call myself their ambassador. <laughs> All lowercase. You can't arrest me. Um, thank you for inviting me to your porch, by the way. It's fine. I'd shake hands with you, but I'm holding a loose burger and both hands, actually. I've got a... I, these are... It's those. This is a normal thing to do on the porch at a party, right? You have burgers. Just, just, a just party eating thing. an undercooked burger and a handful of unpasteurized milk <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we cut over to dad again at home in the dark mad because mom is at work yeah and <laughs> dad's spooning out nothing from an empty yes! pot for uh five minutes we're just like i can hear it click click there's nothing in there you're nothing. making it so much worse oh and now it's time gentlemen are you ready because now it is time for the batting cages. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Look, <sighs> fuck the dialogue of this scene. The dialogue of this scene is, let's throw out the weakest possible pro-life arguments we can and then ignore even the most basic questions that might have them. What this actually is, is them editing around the fact that they put the quarter in the batting machine. It fired a baseball at batting machine speed. They both... Wept, screamed, passed <laughs> out, <laughs> shat themselves, and so there will be not a single pitch thrown in this batting cage. No, 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 no. <sighs> they will, they will play soft toss. Yeah. At the batting cage. So uh, just to be clear, that's where one person like sits on a bucket off to the side by a little bit and lobs a ball, you know, three feet in front of them with. A little bit of arc and the other person hits it. It's like it is actually a, a hitting warm up drill you might do as a baseball player, but it's the easiest possible thing. 
And it's not what you do at a batting cage because what this means is they showed up at a business called a batting cage with their own bucket of actual baseballs Uh, mm -hmm. uh. to do soft toss in one of the cages where you're supposed to put in money and pay for not actual baseballs, but balls that are that size that fit into the machinery of a batting cage and are able to be like ran down a, a little line and fired through this machine. It's <laughs> the, yellow, so the, yellow, the yellow practice balls. But you you have omitted what is by far the most egregious problem with the scene, which is it's the teenage son, Caleb, who is doing the side toss to his 45 <laughs> year old dad, who, by the way, is late on every single pitch. Every soft toss. He's yep. late. He's he he's, is grounding uh, out yeah. in soft toss. Yeah. We, weekly the other way. He might as well be hitting them overhand. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he's going opposite field. Yeah. On soft yeah. Toss. Yeah. Ah, oppo. Oh God. Oh, going was... inside out Jeterian swing there. He's going for a Texas leaguer over the second baseman in soft toss. Okay. Relax. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they, they decide that babies become alive at conception and are fully f- adult voters who is little baby driver's licenses. You should just shoot up into a woman's cooch. And then it's time for a, a mandolin guitar jam slash montage of him playing oh, touch the- football oh. while he plays music to himself playing oh, oh, touch football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it, it feels like they actually shot this whole thing in order with like the duet in little pieces mm-hmm. of them between them. Again, it's them doing the duet and then it's them like frolicking or whatever the fuck they were doing with that football. I don't know. Frolicking is the only <laughs> verb I could think of that would make sense for that. There's a football uh, and frolicking yeah. next to each other. And, and this scene is... 11 minutes long of the mandolin guitar do I like oh, oh absolutely it is yeah. infinite and again just to be clear in case i haven't communicated to you podcast listener what's happening he is playing music for a montage that he is in <laughs> so they are accompanying themselves in their own montage in a montage of them playing music for this montage <laughs> <laughs> and, and the music is still the SpaghettiOs Western that he yep. identified from the intro, right? Like, it doesn't oh, get any so. There's no Sammy Hagar here, right? Like, it, uh, oh. <laughs> Wanted Ed Wood to walk over and just be like, you kids are fucking freaks. Can I just tell you that? Like, learn some <laughs> cinema craft. You weirded me out. Anyway, so now it's time for a scene starring a noisy barrel of potato chips. <laughs> It's now, so big. I'll tell you, podcast listener, we're going to tell you what happened in this scene, but only because we watched it a hundred times because dad will spend it using a barrel, like a pretzel barrel full of potato chips as a maraca every time he or anyone else speaks. Oh, that is dad's like baseball security blanket thing was this <laughs> industrial vat of chips in real life that he would not put down. 100%. <laughs> they had to let him use that in at least one scene. Gotta have my chips. Yep. You said that. Forklift. You got to bring the fork. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Gotta, we got to work chips and a forklift into the scene here. Yeah. But yeah, so that the purpose of this scene is, uh, is Caleb is going to tell his dad that he's trying to ask Rachel out, but you know, she just won't go on a date and, uh, until they get married and, and dad's first line again, transporting me to the porn that I have going on in my head that runs con- uh, uh, parallel to this movie is you need to invite Rachel over because quote, I want some more of that pie. <laughs> They're going to fuck a pie together. They're right? yeah, absolutely going to fuck obviously, her pie while Rachel okay. watches. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. he also compares going on a date to the movies to loaning someone $10,000. <laughs> and as though that weren't a stupid enough metaphor, the point of that metaphor is, you know how when you loan someone $10,000, you want to know that they're going to pay it back? Yeah, pa. Mm-hmm. That's what's going on a date is like. You want to know they're going to pay it back. What? So it's when I ask her, can you co-sign for my date then? I don't understand. <laughs> Son, I was hoping you'd ask that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So Caleb is convinced that dating is like a small mortgage and he <laughs> and, and they have the throwing rocks at the window scene here but again <sighs> Christians don't know anything about love or romance and they've never watched they just know that like rock throwing is, trust me rock throwing at windows it's in movies so he throws rocks at her windows and she comes to the window and he goes hey if I ever ask you out I'm gonna mean it and she's like okay <laughs> bye okay and then he what leaves the because what are you doing Call my cellular phone. What year is this? <laughs> yeah, 2009, to be accurate. Yeah. 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 They have, but believe <laughs> me, those Motorola StarTac phones have a supporting cast credit in this film. So, yeah, they know of the existence of cell phones. <laughs> yep. And so now it's time to set up his cousin Vinny moment. Now, this is shot so terribly and insanely that if we describe it to you as is the format of god awful movies uh scene by scene you the listener will hang yourself using your airpods so i'm going to give you the podcast listener the scoop on what's happening do you remember that case that mom gave him at the beginning no neither do i well that case from the beginning they now have been given a surprise witness, but Caleb, the intern, is the only one who knows that the surprise witness, who will turn out to be the sheriff, is lying. However, he's not there at the fake deposition of the surprise witness, who is the sheriff. <laughs> he is at weird fake university founder guy's house getting a pep talk. I, I That is one. I just want to just podcast listeners. I. Eli and I have some great banter back and forth, and he says wacky stuff about things he'd like to do to John Benet Ramsey. The, what he just described is 100% word for word what actually happened in this actual fucking movie. So if you want to know why my <laughs> spinal cord throttled my brain, that would be why. Yeah. Um, Andrew's the, notes the, for this scene are just like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, the 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 senior partner who by the way like i think his name is midge like it's a, it's a weird right? like so midge is talking to you know bitch mom lawyer lady and it's like so okay you uh, the witness is here you've got to go in and depose him and she's like uh caleb is the only one who knows anything about this witness uh, yeah like you know what isn't a great excuse to the senior partner at your law firm like oh i gave my college son that assignment and he's not here like <laughs> he's not uh, he's the i really let my son who is the intern handle this case i'm i'm all out of fucks boss sorry <laughs> i'm a supreme court lawyer <laughs> and i want to talk about this conversation with michael ferris not because of what they say, because they have the exact same conversation everyone's been having throughout this movie, but because we get a look at the inside of Michael Ferris's home, and I could dedicate an entire <laughs> other 209 episode multi-year podcast to the things in Michael Ferris's home. Andrew, walk us through it. So I'm not going to talk about the decor, which is uh, amazing. I'm going to talk about the silver tray okay. sitting out on the coffee table that has 11 different bottles of cough medicine on it. Why? Um, so, so again, <laughs> Michael Ferris is playing Michael Ferris in this movie. So for purposes of this fictional movie only, please don't sue us. I'm saying there is zero chance that Michael Ferris is not cooking meth in his basement. Right. Or like, it, 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 <laughs> offers guests cough syrup when they come yeah, into his yeah, home. Yeah. Shot but of, like not just shout out Tussin. Yeah. Not just Tussin, though. Like, oh, I've got some top shelf stuff. I got some like 12 year uh, Tussin. I got some batch stuff. Yeah, it's it's absurd. Do you want some original uh, NyQuil? I've also I've got green and orange. I've even got uh, cherry. I don't know if you remember when they did cherry, but they've got it. Oh, did they do cherry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I pour you a glass? I would love a glass. Honestly, I'm going to be super honest right now. Mm -hmm. A more enjoyable viewing experience than this movie would be watching these two actors drink full glasses. <laughs> of cough syrup. If they had each poured a hefty decanter of cough syrup and drank it with open eyes nonstop, <laughs> it would have been the most pleasant viewing experience of this film. <laughs> Get the get the bouquet, right? This is the DM, so you know you're gonna feel that. <laughs> They're kick trying in to about spit it into now. a spit bucket like a wine tasting, but it's cough syrup. So it just Running like dribbles down their face out like of their mouth, oh, oh, like the what end of sideways. Yeah. <laughs> what are you getting there? Notes of cough syrup, <laughs> plastic. <laughs> 
getting Whoa. notes of Merlot, actually. That's weird. <laughs> okay. That's crazy. But yeah, he he finishes his pep talk. And again, his pep talk is literally just like, you should try to overturn Roe versus Wade. He finishes his pep talk. He runs into the law firm and he has his cousin Vinny moment. And again, listener, I can only express to you my condolences and sadness that you cannot watch Andrew's notes <laughs> devolve into confusion <laughs> and then fear and then acceptance throughout this quote unquote deposition. <laughs> oh yeah. No, the, this is uh, the, this someday photographs of my notes will be used in the Kubler Ross <laughs> scale. Right? Like in, oh Christ. Yeah. <sighs> so, uh, so Caleb, the intern goes in, reveals that the, uh, that the sheriff has fabricated the search warrant by the um, incredibly sophisticated technique of noting that the dates don't match. <laughs> <laughs> Thus exposing that the two lawyers, and by the way, these two lawyers were definite. I mean, like they, they clearly put out a casting call for greasy Jew, right? Like, oh, it was, very much so. Uh, uh, yeah, was, okay. When they were all planning this movie and they were like, and I'm sorry, but we have to use the fact that Michael looks Jewish. And Michael was like, come on, guys. Eyes, and they were like, Michael, Michael, you look Jewish. And he was like, I do. I do. I do look Jewish. I look okay. Jewish. We got to use our strengths. Yeah. And and so uh, so Caleb humiliates the two associates who encouraged the sheriff to lie at this law firm that does abortion. I, but all I know is this, right? Like the the senior partner is like hopping mad and is like, and, and you too, you know, you stick around because, you know, you're about to be fired. But like, seriously, and, and I'm 100 percent not not kidding about this. If you're the senior partner at a law firm and your associates are fabricating documents like, dude, that's kind of on you, right? Like it, it, <laughs> it, you're I'm not. That's not a joke. Like you're responsible for what they do. They're associates. Oh. He goes over to the next room and they're like bagging up cocaine. Man, you take one summer off and this this law firm is really <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, this scene, this like him being a good prosecutor of his own side in a practice deposition with someone who's their own motherfucking witness, convinces Rachel that he really <laughs> does have the power to do it. And he has to take on Roe versus Wade. And he's like, no, I don't know if I can do it because I want to go back to law school. And she's like, you got to go for the job. Wait, that was the last scene. And if I don't win the moot court case, I'll die. And she's like, we're going to win. And he's like, I'll think about it. Gaw. And that is the end of the goddamn scene. <laughs> yeah. So that's the end of that scene. And uh, it was fun. We learned that Caleb had the superpower of magical question asker inside mm -hmm. of him this whole time <laughs> but before we find out if he learns to use that power in act three let me give act three the hard <laughs> sell kind of, kind of trapped by how stupid the movie is <laughs> will patrick henry college win the go bots mr pib junior varsity d league moot court championship <laughs> That's the entire heart cell and actor. Yeah. Find out the answer to that question and absolutely nothing else when we return for the unviable outside the script conclusion of come what may. And the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> yep. In conclusion, as Jesus said, never get an abortion because that that's a baby. The end. So what do you think, Mr. Tor Torres? <sighs> it, that, that was awful. Oh, I, look, I, I, I want to be clear here. I'm being literal. I am in awe of how bad that was. The, the sheer lack of understanding you have of, of, of the law, of reason, of logic, hell, of the English language has reduced me to a childlike state of wonder. Everything I know, everything I ever thought I knew has been blasted to the wind. You, you are a reverse sunset and you make me ashamed to be human. So better. Oh yeah. Oh, way better. I mean, I didn't even vomit this time. Right. <laughs> And we're back when we left off to very creepy cum leaking vol cells. We're at a law <laughs> oh, office. That's voluntary God. celibates. 
And they were fighting over the best way to be wrong about women's rights. And now they're doing more of that same thing back at Caleb's house. Yep. They're fighting and he's literally proposing to her so that she will go on a date with him. <sighs> <laughs> yep. He's, he's like, yep, this pie you made, now two of them, this is really good, marry me. And <laughs> that's the plot. That's the real plot of yeah. the movie. But yeah. she says no, to be clear. She says no. She says, look, if I'm going to be a good wife, you need to be a good husband. Uh, right. And, and, and him being a good husband means... Trying to overturn Roe versus Wade in their fake moot court <laughs> competition. <laughs> means means the only argument you can make is to scream abortion is baby murder over and over and over again. Yep. She will acquiesce to God's decision to put them together as partners and therefore also partners in life, not just in moot court. That was God's idea, even though she didn't really like him. But if he's willing to acquiesce to this better angle in her opinion for moot court she'll marry him yep. i believe that's what's happening she will marry him if he acquiesces to her approach to this moot court competition also this <laughs> yep. is where she lets us know that she literally will not hold hands with someone until they get married and again i just want to point out that's terrifying that's just so it, the fact that that is an underpinning of this horrible movie is terrifying there might as well be black holes opening up and just sucking extras into the ether throughout this movie levels of terrifying yep and this is where they kind of do that like trick her i think what's her name again rachel and <laughs> dad dad <laughs> rachel and dad have a sir. trick going rachel and sir rachel rachel and sir <laughs> mister have a trick going that we don't quite know about. We're about to have that revealed to us. They're going to trick Caleb into her opinion on going for the jugular at the moot court debate, right? That's the it's a little ruse they set up here. Yeah, because yeah. dad, he gets his uh, lie textbook published and he's like, oh, I can't publish it because even though it's the right thing to do, what if I don't get the college experience I wanted? And Caleb's like, you got to do the right thing no matter what. And then dad and Rachel point, they like double finger guns at him for a solid minute. And he's like, <laughs> oh, you think that's a point about the moot court thing? You got me. You got you ever have a toddler play a prank on you? Like they run up and they're like, I said your head was a berry, but it's not as banana. And you've got to be like, what? That is how Caleb reacts to this gotcha well, from and his. And that's how he, that, that's how he reacts within the context of the movie. But like from a filmmaking perspective, nobody told them that in order for this scene to work as cinema, you as the audience have to be able to recognize intentional bad acting in this cast. So, yeah, that there was zero chance this was ever going to work. It's a mystery. And so and now it's time for them to practice a little bit more. Oh, God. And, and we have uh, what uh, based on his notes, Andrew's least favorite scene. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, question for you. So they're practicing the you know getting ready for their moot court thing do you need they're they're practicing memorizing the code numbers <sighs> to cite past cases do you need to do that is that how that works according to the law so i i don't know what happens in make believe pretend fake court right like in in real court cuz let me be 100% clear about this. What they are doing is she is, Rachel is reading out case names, right? Like Griswold v. Connecticut, Pierce v. Society of Sisters. And he's got to come back and give you the the volume and page number, right? So he's got to say 368 U.S. 195. Or, and, and that's what they think what? is the secret technique to winning moot court supreme court cases <laughs> so okay if a lawyer for example just off the top of my head let's say a lawyer mentions brown versus the board of education in a case and then gets that code number wrong yeah. <laughs> are we are we back to separate but equal for the rest of that <laughs> trial and 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 in particular look like it it 
lawyers agonize over getting the citation form exactly correct in the brief. So, you know, whatever on that. But this is about the oral argument. And at the oral argument, you would just say, as this court held in Brown, because you know who doesn't need to get the citation for Brown versus Board of Education? The Supreme Court. They know what Brown v. Board of <laughs> They've Education They've read that is. one? You they, think they, they might have, yeah. They've and, scanned and it, it? Which, and it's which not Board like, of Education is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too uh, slow. Uh, doesn't uh, count. Topeka, Kansas, actually. But, um, like... There, it's not like they're getting up and getting the reporters from the shelves, right? Oh, you said three fifty-eight. Okay, bring me that volume. Like, I, it, no, it. This has all been briefed out, and they might ask you, like, okay, you know, what's your best case here? What what case stands for X proposition? And so, like, so you need to know the cases upon which you rely. But, but no, none of this. <laughs> oh God, yeah. yeah. This is exactly what stupid Christian homeschoolers must think like being a lawyer is about, right? Like it's about who can <laughs> memorize, right? Like it's the same reason they're great at spelling bees, right? They're like, who can memorize the most of X? And you're like, that literally couldn't be further from what being a lawyer <laughs> is about. And and this is I, why the Alliance Defending Freedom is full of, you know, morons. Anyway. I just love the idea, though, of like someone standing in front of the Supreme Court and getting a citation wrong and then being like, oh, sorry, needs to be in the form of a question. Alex yeah. Trebek walks out. Beep, no. <laughs> Dang it. <sighs> if only if only you'd known that was 369 U.S., then uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't have to take away fundamental rights from no. millions of people. But 14th you know, Amendment's yep. canceled. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> oh, 14th Amendment. Oh, it's back. It's back. It's back. It's back. Right, it's question back. form. Okay. And speaking of the 14th Amendment, we come out of that quizzing montage to them proving that their case for being pro-life is supported by the 14th Amendment because the baby is alive. <laughs> uh, very confusing here. I, 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 what, what do you think they were going for there? Like, <laughs> all right, we got to prove the baby's alive with the 14th Amendment. I Let's... Mind map it, free association, <laughs> go. Baby. Slavey. Dead. See, dead and slave. Oh, 14th shit. Amendment, we did it. Oh, we're there. Okay, got it. Yeah, this, this is where they say the line, life isn't determined by science, it's philosophy. And I just wrote in my notes, it is super nope. duper determined by it's, science. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all the way, the science part. Yep. <sighs> and And Caleb goes for the like... He's he's trying to be like profound. He's like, listen, proving it uh, is not just a problem. Proving the baby alive with the Fourteenth Amendment, it's not just a problem. It's a solution. No, nope, I, nope. I was. It's impossible. He says it's impossible. Yep. And then he oh, realizes uh, only accidentally true thing he's managed to say <laughs> in this movie. <laughs> but then he contradicts it immediately. He realizes the secret is going to be to force them to believe something in court without having to actually make them believe it in court. Andrew, there's a thing for that, right? In court. I, so let me take a tiny step back. For, so he says, I don't have to prove it if it's in the record, which is almost, and they say it simultaneously, right? I mean, it's like it, I expected a doodly do out of it, right? Like it was, it was it, the crazy scripted um, in the record. Yeah. Jim, in the record. I was slow. Yeah, I was too, slow. too slow. Damn it. One, two. In the, in the record. record. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Right. So, uh, record. That's, it's like Michael Ferris is, has got a cargo cult of law school going on in his head, right? Like, he's like a, <laughs> he's like a magpie that's occasionally heard legal words and he strings them together into like sovereign <laughs> citizen level nonsense. But like, so here's the thing. You can definitely confuse him with a shiny object. Yeah. <laughs> at an appellate court, right? You, you are confined to the record, right? Like you, 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 the facts are the facts that are established at the trial court below. So I, like that's almost accidentally correct. But, but then of course they, they say, okay, <laughs> it's the record. Now let's go look through these books of cases. And you're like, oh, you goddamn idiots. Like, oh, so the record isn't every case uh, is ever. not every any case book? ever decided. No, no. The record oh, okay. is the facts decided at the trial court below, which of course have nothing to do with 
<laughs> anything that goes on in right. this movie. Never minding that that they're the the argument they think is a clever gotcha argument is an argument so stupid that like Neil Gorsuch would take you back out to the woodshed and you know well, beat you a couple of times. <laughs> like it's ridiculous. But yeah, they they think that if they find the phrase "the baby is alive." Anywhere in the history of American <laughs> jurisprudence or basically like if they're going to find like the baby is and alive separate places and put, paste them all together, they would win this case right yes. away. That's seems to be the plot. That is the denouement of their argument. And spoiler alert to make it even dumber, they will use a document cited and dismissed in Roe versus Wade. We'll get to it, but they, they will use <laughs> something from Roe versus Wade where the court at the time was like, come on, that's fucking stupid. What are you doing? <sighs> and then we get a little scene at the end there where there's, they've been studying so hard that they're sleeping on the same couch, not cuddling or anything, but like he's asleep on the end of the couch and she's asleep lying on the couch. And the dad comes down and is like, get the fuck off the couch. What are you doing lying on the couch? And so he like <laughs> moves over to the chair. And again, this movie thinks it's like, Oh, what a gentleman or what a dick slave to God. I don't know what they're going for, but there's <laughs> the movie wants us to enjoy it. I had to watch this scene like four times because the, the volume is, you know, crazy out of control. But Caleb whispers, yes, sir, to his dad when his dad taps him on the shoulder. So it is 100 percent his dad going, uh, you, you cannot be on the same couch as a as a woman like. Uh, yep. Yep. And they're not touching talk about this in the morning. Yeah, dude. Also, there's cum pouring out of the ankle of your jeans. Clean yourself <laughs> up. <and> switch couches. <laughs> Uh, and speaking of things that don't matter and are terrifying, his hard drive died. Will this uh. ever affect the movie? No. <laughs> does it have anything to do with earlier in the movie? No. But it does have them have a cute moment where he's like, I'm going to need a lot of post-it notes, which leads me to this question. <laughs> Andrew, how many post-it notes would you say the average Supreme Court case uses? So I know you were going for me to say zero there, but actually, like when I have my binder of cases, I will <laughs> I will put a lot of post-it notes so I know exactly where to turn to. Morgan, notes. I want you to cut this yeah, and I want you to cut everything <laughs> that Andrew has said on this episode. He is no longer welcome on this podcast. Oh, really? Also, yeah. Eli, I hate to, hate to correct you on the air, but this also is an amazing Chekhov's gun callback to earlier. <laughs> That's true. Um, they I did talk about a legal pad. Legal pad. She was like, you know, never trust technology. And then right here, she's like, I told you never to trust technology. So, I mean, the Chekhov's gun was paper, which is not very <laughs> exciting, but that was a callback. And are we going to pass lightly over the fact that the alarm that goes off on his computer is the like Simpsons alarm <laughs> from it's like, no, that's in case we've gone blind. Like it's, oh. it is, you know, a six level siren that, that is apparently he bought the computer with the like, uh, warning when your hard drive crashes, the air raid siren session. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> now at the same time as this is happening, dad discovers that mom is working on an abortion case. Uh, oh, right. Because <laughs> there's the book, right? She yeah, like, no. grabs a book about abort. Like, I'm just going to read this biography of Susan Smith. I think she was well within her rights. <laughs> Who are we to say how many years after birth is viable? But dad finds out because he's out in the car, right? And he's got the car tuned to KWXP, all exposition radio all the time. And they are literally recapping <laughs> like, and so a famous prominent local lawyer is defending the evil abortionist in the Supreme Court. And get this, her son is arguing against abortion in moot court, you know, like they cover on the radio. That would uh, be amazing if Supreme Court cases, the news also told you what their kids were up to. <laughs> right, like today it will be argued in front of the Supreme Court. Also, uh, his son is uh, doing pretty well in JV football. <laughs> don't don't know why I would have told you that. <laughs> this is a crazy way to think about the world or the news working. <laughs> 70, 73 yard reception last game. This is WKXP all exposition all the time. Yeah, just boofing with Squee and his buddies. <laughs> Hanging oh, out. Kevin in the squee soundboard. 
<laughs> and so this is where we learn why mom is defending the abortionist. She's not really an abortionist. They they tried to make that movie and everyone just started screaming. They killed the original actress. It was a whole thing. No, she's fighting against parental consent because her parents forced her to get an abortion as a kid. You know, one of those forced abortions teenagers get. It, it's almost uh, as if taking the choice away from the woman who's pregnant is bad no matter why no you matter do how it. you do yeah, it. That was oh. her line earlier in the movie. <laughs> but yeah, even though she admits that the only reason that she's working on this case is because she was forced to abortion and and she didn't want to abortion, uh, her husband decides he's going to go to his brother's house. It's It's literally the like, I'm going to mother's, except with the genders reversed. Uh, and she says, like, what am I supposed to do? Quit my job as a high powered lawyer and cook for you all day? And the husband is like, yes. And spoiler alert, <laughs> that will be the end of this goddamn fucking movie. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. So now it is time for the big moot court championship. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the only thing I want to say about this moot court championship is the quotes out of context section of this montage is my favorite thing ever, ever. I would replace the the memories of my honeymoon with the exact clips of these <laughs> montage things. <laughs> um, one of them was the Second Amendment guarantees the right of self-defense and yep. cut. So <laughs> yep. to be clear, this is a montage of arguments being made by um, almost entirely kids at Christian fundamentalist colleges like Neil Patrick Harris U or wherever they are. And one of the kids says that this is supposed to be an argument in favor of overturning Roe v. Wade. And he's like, the second amendment guarantees the right of self-defense. <laughs> and they cut. What was he going? Like, where was he going to go with that? A, a fetus with a gun? It's the like, only thing to think of. Yeah. He said, I mean, I, I would think that would be the pro abortion side of the argument, right? Like, look, don't get me wrong. That fetus would murder you and everyone you cared about if he had a choice. <laughs> Abortions uh, should technically be duels if you read the Bill of Rights. <laughs> also, another great quote out of context from this montage. We are not Christian extremists. Mumble, mumble, uh, cut away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, it's like the idea that my argument is rooted entirely in religious fundamentalism cuts. Yeah. Like, if your argument can't be more than three seconds long before a cut, maybe you're wrong. Yeah, maybe, you're maybe wrong. That is, that is a <laughs> great indicator wrong. that you are wrong. If, if you have to go rabble, rabble, rabble at the end of your sentence, <laughs> you're the one in a bad position. So, so they've made it to the finals. Oh, well, 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 can we, can we show how we get there too, by the way, which is that montage has below the, the text, right? So that, <laughs> so we know what's going on and it goes first round. Second round, semifinals, semifinals. Final, right? So that, that means, right? There are ten teams here, max, right? Like just, just, just by comparison, like when I took Alex to Harvard, there's seven preliminary rounds, and they cut to a round of sixty-four, right? Like that's no. and it and it takes a weekend, right? Like this was like an afternoon, and you show up and you get out in time for a for a late dinner, right? Like with a uh, number of teams that's not even a power of two, they, yeah. nothing. <laughs> works here yeah. no yeah but they they make it to the weird odd numbered double elip, triple elimination <laughs> finals right <laughs> and this is where we learn that one of the judges who was a supreme court justice who ruled for roe versus wade is on the panel of judges for this moot court Thing. Aaron Blair is not a Supreme Court justice. He sure the fuck is. Could they not get the rights to name a real <laughs> they justice? They could name a you, dead it's, guy. It's uh, a historical <laughs> figure. You can just name that, right? Just, oh. just pretend. Oh, John Paul Stevens' estate isn't going to sue you. Uh, Rehnquist was on that, too. Rehnquist is dead. Oh, no. Rehnquist voted against, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was one of the two. Okay. Yeah. 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 Seven two decision, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So so he's like, oh, no, we have to try my lame exception excuse. And they're like, no, you a college kid at a 300 person Christian college founded by Michael Fassbender Jr. are smarter than Supreme Court justices. Trust your guts. 
Yeah. <sighs> and then and then we review that Latin thing. Remember the Latin thing from the passive aggressive chalkboard <laughs> yeah. at the house? It's let justice up. be served. Let the bodies fall where they may. <laughs> yeah. We're the yeah. good guys. Yeah. yeah, let the bodies hit the floor. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. God. So now we're going to cut back and forth because this movie doesn't know how final speeches go. Mom and Caleb are going to do their final end of the movie big hoorah speeches at the same time, dissolving both speeches into utter fucking nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> this will be so fun. We'll do a cross cut montage together and we'll sing. Maybe for it too. Should we sing <laughs> for ourselves? Yeah, no, th this is definitely the like turn around the trucker hat moment of this movie. Like <laughs> Caleb gets up there and he's asked the question of like, so you're saying Roe v. Wade is good law? And and he pauses and he looks back at Michael Ferris who who gives him the nod. And mind you, remember that whole montage about like how he's got to have all the citations memorized because every second counts. Uh, not apparently. No. Yeah. <laughs> The judge, the judge who who ruled in favor of Roe v. Wade, actually asks him at this point. They're like doing a little cross cut, and Caleb presents a few arguments, and the judge is like, "So you're saying I was correct about Roe v. Wade?" And then, he, like you said, he looks back at what, what's his name, Doctor whatever the fuck, yeah, mm -hmm. Michael Ferris. Michael, yeah, he looks back at Michael Ferris forever. Yeah, and the judge is like, "Dude, you're taking." A while with like a series of <laughs> nods from Michael Farris and like your girlfriend over there. And did you want to answer? And he finally turns back and he's like, you're worse than Hitler. <laughs> yeah, his, yeah. His final like chariots of fire speech is baby murderer, murder baby. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. And at one point, this is one of my favorite parts of the movie. They're doing the cross cut thing. And they cut over to mom for a second, but it's like too early <laughs> for her, for the actress. And she says nothing. So <laughs> we get one little cut and they have to just cut right back yeah. to him in their movie, which is not <laughs> to be clear, live streamed yeah. in their movie. They're like, and back to mom. Pass. Yeah. Back to the sun. <laughs> it's like a weather report where they cut to the weather man too early and they're like, OK, seems like we've lost the signal there. No, nope, we've, <laughs> yeah. we've got mom back. Sorry. <laughs> it's that the movie. Maybe so happy. And then I, I know I teased this earlier, so I just want to point out when he's doing his big chariots of fire speech, which again is just him shitting into his own hands and slowly spurting it down the sides of his face and into his ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the evidence, remember, he was looking for the evidence that the baby is alive, is from Roe versus Wade. And it's a medical report from 1859 that the court in Roe versus Wade said is fucking stupid. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's an accurate. I had a big, long thing. Uh, it's also <laughs> quote mind in the movie because, of course, it is right. But but literally, they're, they're just citing it for the proposition that, quote, the fetus dot 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 is a lot or the, the the I don't even does it say fetus I don't know what it says but it's like they're they're just they're just citing it for the words is alive end quote yep. and and that's not do they do they think we think that fetuses are like cyborgs or something like I, I, I what fetuses what are the undead on? if you cast I mean a, a cyborg's viable probably so. <laughs> yeah right, right yeah. no no fetuses are undead you can cast um turn undead on <laughs> yeah, right. them and then you can kill them if you get your third set, fourth set of spell slots yeah it's pretty easy uh, they, yeah they do have drain life energy on it so. <laughs> oh, man and then to to wrap all of this up he cites the Declaration of Independence oh. that, that says everyone is entitled to life. Yeah. Especially yeah. He babies. actually says the Declaration of Independence is a legally binding document. And it's absolutely not. <laughs> nope, is that, that is that absolutely that is. not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they just lie. It's just a complete lie. That is a contract that America signed with England about not doing abortions. It's a letter. <laughs> it's a nasty letter that we sent. Literally, that that is the legal significance of the Declaration of Independence. It's a sternly worded letter. <laughs> <laughs> it's legally binding. We don't like you anymore. Yeah. Dear John. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't I don't get it. 
So just really quick, I wanted to review a couple more arguments they're making here. Mm -hmm. One of them was that, like, he, the, Caleb was saying that people who argue pro-choice are saying, you know, it's viable inside the womb, but if you take it out, it's not viable now. And he's saying, well, you can't be checking outside of the womb. That's not fair anymore. So, like, menstruation would be illegal in his head? <laughs> I'm unclear. I, I, so I think what he was going for, because he, he's trying to use the term rip the baby out of the mother. Right. So he's he's trying to define viability as like, all right, so let's say a pregnant lady gets in a fight with Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. Right. Uh -huh, right. Scorpion. She loses the second round. He rips her baby out of her and the baby, of Got course, it. bites it. I don't right. think he should get bonus points. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is no worse than any argument being made by Caleb uh, in this speech. It, if uh, Mortal Kombat had fatalities and fatalities <laughs> and babalities, oh, they would have gotten in more trouble. Fatality. Fe See? Fatality is a quality pun there, Heath. I want I want us to pause to acknowledge that. Thank Patreon you. goals. Let's yeah. make it happen. Uh, so that's uh, over, and yep. um, he lost. Yeah. So again, let, let's go back and remember, admittedly, this was movie was written in crayon by 12 year olds. But the plot of the movie is uh, Caleb overcomes his satanic desire to argue for a slightly less ridiculous position. And when paired with last year's Nationals champion, loses, <laughs> loses. So, good. And mom wins. Yeah, her pro-abortion court, yeah, court yeah. document so thing. So it's almost as if they're saying, look, we understand that our arguments position are ridiculous, not at all founded in the law. And if you make them in a court of law, you will lose, be humiliated. Um, but uh, fiat justia, whatever, <laughs> let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> it's not about whether you win or lose. It's how you gently toss the baseball to your dad. Yeah. Sorry, one other question for you, Andrew, about uh, how a debate team would work. Um, <sighs> Caleb took over entirely for his team here at the end. But he was new guy. Like, he got paired with the reigning universal national world champ of this contest. And then he was in charge of doing the whole thing I, it, this I, year. Would so that ever happen? So I had an 11 page rant on this back when mom was like, you must win the moot court in your, you know, first year in order to, to come back because we just learned in the previous segment, right? That Patrick Henry college placed first, second and third each of the last two years. Right. And so yeah. what that means is you could come in and you could be the hottest shit on earth, but you're probably still the D team behind however many people are coming back that won last year. I, oh. <laughs> yeah. And like, look, I, 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 as somebody who's coached a debate team for many, 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 many years, like when you're the freshman and you come in and you get paired up against the senior team, you're like, Oh, well, sorry. Great job. I'm advancing the seniors. Uh, come back next year. Right. Like it, it that's the way. Yeah. So none of this would happen. And you definitely don't. It's the team debate because each person has a role. Like, you don't just get to be like, all right, everyone climb on my back. Um, I'm, a <laughs> I'm carrying baby murder out of here. Right. Uh, well, here's here's my thought. I think there's probably a cut scene where she was like, well, obviously, I'm the senior, so I'll, I'll take the lead. And he just laid Timothy in front of her. And she was like, you know what? Good point. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was just about to say, however, <laughs> Book of Timothy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but n now it's time for the, the big heart-wrenching moment. She is uh, late at night after she's won her case. Lawyer mom is in her office watching her son on Moot Court TV. <laughs> Moot watching Court him lose. Moot yeah. Court TV. That is going to replace WKXP and the Ocho as my go-to joke for implausible media channels. Like, yep. <laughs> oh yeah, we're here. We're here televising an event uh, attended by thirty-six homeschoolers. <laughs> yeah, she is so moved by her son's losing argument that she calls her husband to say she's quitting her job and she's coming home to cook for her husband. Literally, literally, she calls him and she's like, "Hello, Don. I think his name was Don, right? <laughs> Hello, Don. It's Judith Hogan." 
We have the same last name. <laughs> <laughs> Judith Hogan. Hello. I read the book of Timothy. Now I'm ready to be a good wife and <laughs> stop having a gainful employment job that makes you feel bad because yep. I make more money than you. And then we cut back to the post moot court thing and dad's like, hey, I'm going to go fuck the shit out of your mom. Can you get another <laughs> ride? And he drives away. And, and, and the knowing giggle that Rachel gives in that scene. Oh, man. <laughs> And and so we caught mom and dad kiss with the oldest, driest lips possible. Ugh. And and then we doodly do to the future, where Rachel's dad is calling Caleb's dad to give them permission to marry. Okay, that's definitely what happened. Hundred percent that is what this movie because is. Because Rachel is on the phone, she hangs up and she walks out into the room with Caleb and his mom and dad, and she says Exact words. He said yes. Yeah. Yep. I, I, I'm so glad I have Eli here to translate this movie from crazy to English <laughs> because this needed subtitles, right? Cause, cause I'm watching it and your girlfriend's in the little alcove in your house and walks out and says, he said yes. And you know, you're not the he, right? Like that's how pronouns work. Like, I, oh God. I was like, why are they happy? She's going to marry somebody. Oh, uh, yep. she is. She's property. I get it. She gets interrupted making her Rachel's recipe.com website. And this movie is so bad. It's very clearly a word document. And you can see the actress realize that because she writes Rachel's recipes. And then when the camera gets to her, she writes, dot com yes. like 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 the word document would just instantly upload and be like oh i didn't realize this was a website there oh, we go is a website okay. oh okay so, wait, so you pushed clippy shows up looks like you're creating a website <laughs> do you want to stay home and bear children instead but yeah it would her her father has given his father permission to marry him and the denouement romantic you may kiss the bride moment of this movie is them holding fucking hands because her dad <laughs> agreed the, the, again. Yes. The big ending of their love story is her dad agreeing to let him have a love story starting after the movie. That's it. Yep. And then they hold hands and then they hold hands and then the screen goes black and the credits say, this film was made by 40 homeschooled kids. This is their first try, okay? You guys are dicks. You are. <laughs> literally. I mean, not those last two sentences, but it's literally, this film was made by 40 homeschooled kids. It was their first film ever. Stop making a podcast about it. Stop I know it. you're making you guys a podcast about it. I, I really <laughs> wanted a Marvel like mid credit scene here of Caleb and dad and, and Caleb being like, so... um. Holding hands with Rachel, I don't, it's just, it's not that great, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, like, I just thought it was going to be, I, I don't know, the first time I pulled my hand away really quickly and, oh, man. <laughs> oh, I wanted a mid credit scene where Nick Fury just inducts him into the adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Caleb, we need someone who can make a losing argument and we've got everyone. <laughs> and... You obviously didn't get into grad school because that college is unaccredited and they won't <laughs> care that you went there. So you're yeah. an Avenger. Yeah. Can, can we speak to the money for a second? Right. Like this scene ends. Right. Dad's been fired from secular university for writing creationist nonsense. Mom, because she strolls out in mom jeans. Right. Is uh, has quit being a high powered lawyer. Their house uh, by the way, which shows up on the check, real address in Purcellville, Virginia. Go check it out. Uh, their house is 39,000 square <laughs> feet, right? And she what? writes three $20,000 checks for this, you know, garbage universe. Where's the money coming from on this? Well, her high powered lawyer Supreme Court job, of course. <laughs> yeah. That is not a library. Thank you. Yeah, but she's quit that, <laughs> right? Well, she's still got the leftover lawyer money. I don't know. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe the dad's making a lot of money on his textbook full of lies. We'll never find out. The movie ends. Oh, there's yeah. 20, those 20 copies each sold for a million bucks a piece. Yeah. He probably sold all 20 of those books that he got in a very small box that we saw there <laughs> at the end. He was very excited about. 
Yeah. All right. Well, uh, while <laughs> while Rachel learns to hold hands reverse cowgirl style with Caleb, <laughs> uh, we're going to wrap it up with the analogy section. So you guys ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Complete the following. Uh, presenting arguments for the Supreme Court of the United States is to <laughs> being on the moot court squad at Patrick Henry College as blank is to blank. Uh, ooh, the, the liquid death copy we read on air is to the liquid death copy I wrote and only patrons will get to hear. <laughs> I did it. That is correct. I did it. Oh, see, I was going to go with as Orsman is to regatta because the SAT <laughs> dropped its racist analogy section in 2005, Heath. The, didn't they get back some woke analogies, though, now? Aren't they back? They're back out of sixteen hundred, and they have woke analogies. I, I think there are Hopefully. no analogies, but there are reading comprehension passages from minority authors. So, oh, okay. So it's all fine. So now the SAT is totally fine, and the, you know that two hundred point gap between uh, white students and minority students. You shouldn't worry about that. Is that <laughs> still where it is? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. Wow, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Isn't that one? Isn't that one of the arguments in a real debate that you might be dealing with? Is like whether or not. Yeah. Standardized test scores should count. Yeah, kind of, kind of why that was uh, off the top of my head right there. Uh, maybe it my seems, son has read like eleven really good different law review articles in the last <laughs> week about this. So yeah, got it. I'm really, I'm really glad you pointed that out because I muted myself and told Morgan to cut all this because I thought you were just apropos of nothing, being like, hey, you know who does bad on the SATs? Blacks. All right, check me out on opening arguments, kiddos. Bye bye. <laughs> Doom, 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 doom. Ryan Slocknick, evil giraffes on Mars. To be clear, we were saying the opposite. We were yeah. saying the opposite of that. Exact yeah. opposite. No kidding. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, well, that does it for the review of Come What May. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet. Because we actually have some amazing news about next week. So tell us, Eli, What's on deck? We'll the be watching Boondock the Saints. theater release of Overcomer. We are watching the Boondock Saints. Overcomer. Nice. Watching two. We're doing a double episode next week. Overcomer and Heath is watching the Boondock Saints at home. This this is a trick question because I will have murdered Eli for making me watch this movie long before <laughs> they could do any follow up episodes. So with that, so. To <laughs> Eli's going to bring episode 209 to a merciful close. Great. Sorry about that. <laughs> of course, big thanks to Andrew Torres for joining us. Uh, Andrew, where can everyone hear more? Andrew. I mean, I, I'm no moot American court champion, but if, you, <laughs> if you'd like the second best way to win a debate, you can check out opening arguments. Excellent. And once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors for all their generosity. If you'd like to help support the show as well, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful. And then I'll get you early access to an ad free version of every episode. And my copy for the liquid death commercial. You, oh, <laughs> and you might get to hear Eli's probably still illegal for Patreon. I don't know. We'll check. What we're going to De definitely, will definitely us. still illegal. Don't be still nuts. illegal. So you Don't might not anybody. get to hear that. You You're might get hear. to hear that with a bunch of beeps. Cool. <laughs> and of course, you can also help us out a ton by leaving us a five star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms that Eli is no longer involved with. Not on the social. And if you anymore. enjoyed this show, he's a liar. Be sure to check out <laughs> our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed and The Skeptocrat available on iTunes, Stitcher and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by... The Law Offices of P. Andrew Torres. There it is. And our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slonick of Evil Drafts on Mars. One guy. All of the music was written and performed by... That's an entire band? I feel like I should... <laughs> God damn it. Evil Drafts on Mars is a whole band. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark. One guy. Was used with permission. <laughs> that is one guy. <laughs> Thanks. Don't confuse it. I see what you're doing. Switch you're trying to Morgan. do that thing Morgan, where now <laughs> it's not clear which one was true. God damn it. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Andrew Torres and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Every year, students from Patrick Henry College are forced to watch this movie, and some of them like to leave troll reviews on IMDb which are awesome. <laughs> really? 
Yep. Absolutely true. You should go check it out. Oh, we're going to read through some of those in a second. That's awesome. The Supreme Court went on to overturn Roe v. Wade. Like, seriously, that <sighs> might happen. You goddamn should have voted for Hillary Clinton. If this is your fault. If you didn't specifically vote for Hillary Clinton in the 2016 general election, that's your fault. Rachel and Caleb broke up when Caleb was discovered holding hands with the entire softball team behind the abandoned mall. <laughs> <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.